Create your brand website, no hosting. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to build a brand website that does not require you to have your own hosting. We will be using a service called Wix.com, a simple yet effective brand website. Having no hosting is the easiest way to create a brand website. And these website services have come a long way in the past couple of years. Now, there are numerous different options out there you can use to build a website without hosting. However, the one we highly recommend and the one we're going to be using in this lesson is Wix.com. Wix.com is a drag and drop website builder. And what that means is any elements you want on the website, you just drag them from a menu and drop them onto your template. But don't worry, you're going to see exactly what that means in a short while. The great thing is there's no HTML coding knowledge required. You can literally do this with no experience of ever having built any kind of website before. And if you have, you might be surprised about how effective this system is. Now it is free to start and you can get your site looking exactly how you want it. You can then upgrade for about $12 a month to add a whole range of extra features. You will learn how you can pay someone to do this for you and relatively cheaply. However, we recommend you do build it yourself. It is very simple to build, as you will soon see, and it can also be a lot of fun. So let's get started. Okay, so before we go to Wix.com, if you haven't already set up your domain, in other words, bought your domain name, then I just quickly want to show you how you can do that. If you've already used the information in the last module, about using GoDaddy, that's fine. You can still use GoDaddy. I'm just gonna quickly show you a different option. It's called Namecheap.com. Once you get to the main site, all you need to do is type in the domain name you want. You can see I put charterkitchen.com and then click search. And here we go, we can see it's available, charterkitchen.com. It's $10.69 a year. I'm gonna click on the add to cart button and then view cart and the who is guard. That actually means that nobody can actually find out that you own this domain and it's something I always do, and it's free with Namecheap. So you leave it as enabled, and then click Confirm Order. Now, if you haven't got an account with Namecheap, you'll just have to go through this right-hand side to create your account. I've actually got three accounts with Namecheap, and I'm just gonna go and log in using the information on the left. Okay, so once you've logged in or you've registered, you'll come to this page. It's asking you to confirm, and I've actually got a discount here of about a dollar, so I'm only gonna pay 961, and I'm just gonna check out with PayPal. You can select other payment options if you don't have PayPal and use a credit card or debit card. But I'm just going to go ahead and purchase it and then we're going to go to Wix. Okay, so here we are at Wix.com, W-I-X.com. Once you get here, all we're going to do is click on Start Now. Now you can click on the Sign Up button or you can use one of these links on the right. I'm going to click Continue with Google because I'm actually logged into Google with the email address I want to use for this service anyway. And there you can see it's brought us to this page and it's given me account name rich827. Now, before we go any further, we do want to change our username. So it normally just randomly gives you one. If you signed in a different way, you might have been able to choose it. But to change it at any time, and you can change it at any time, you just want to go up, put your mouse cursor over your username and then click on account settings. And then you can change anything here you want. But the one thing we do want to change is our username. And I'm just going to change it to Charter Kitchen and then click Save Changes. It's going to ask you to put your password in, put it in and click OK. And there you can see it said save. So my username has actually been changed. And if I refresh the page, you can see now it's saying Charter Kitchen. Now I actually forgot to do this when I was creating the rest of the video. So you might actually see the original username up here, but don't let that worry you. Just make sure that you come in and change it now. Now at this point, you can click on any of these topics if you wish, or just click on other. We're gonna be able to choose our template that we want to use after this next step. So I'm just gonna click on other. I'm gonna click on start with Wix editor because it's just much easier to use. And now it's brought us to our templates. Now you can search by category, so for instance, if my product was in health and wellness, I could scroll down and click on health and wellness. And it's gonna show me some templates that I could use. Alternatively, you can do a keyword search. So in my case, it would be kitchen. And you can see it's brought up some kitchen options. Now, personally, I think the best way is to search all templates. So you see under categories here, it says see all templates. So I'm just gonna click on that. And then you can scroll through every single template they have. Now, for instance, I'm looking to create a kitchen brand website but it doesn't mean I have to stick to templates in this search that apply to kitchens. I could just quite as easily 
choose this one, the vintage car one. And because I changed the images, it's gonna become a kitchen website. So you're not stuck, but just scroll through. There are literally tons of them in here. Find something you like the look of, and you can always go in and play around with these. Once you've been through a bit of this training and see what you like, I quite like the look of this one, the dietitian. And as you can see, if you put your mouse cursor over it, it shows you what it looks like on a mobile. And you can always right click on the view button and open it in a new tab. And then it shows you exactly what it looks like. And I really like the look of this one, but I'm gonna keep looking for now. And that's all you've gotta do is like scroll through these, any you like the look of, then just open a new tab and take a closer look. But I'm gonna carry on searching. I'm gonna find the one I want to work with and then come back. And the one I've found that I'm gonna be working with is this one. It's called Ninja Parents Blog. It's a nice simple setup. It's got the recent post set up as a feed and I just like the look of it. So I'm actually gonna use this one. Now, if while you're doing the search, you lose the template and you don't wanna go back through all the pages, you can just search by using the name. So as you can see, I just put parents in and it found the blog I wanted to use. To begin creating your website, all you need to do is put your mouse cursor over the template you want to use and click on edit. Now, one quick thing before we go any further, when you first do this, you'll probably get a video pop up. And it's one thing about the Wix site. Not only is it incredibly easy to use, but they have great resources for helping you. If I go back to that search page, all you need to do to get any help at any time is click on support and it will give you all the topics you could possibly need to create this site. So the first thing I want to change here is the title and to pretty much change anything on this site, if it's text or image, all you need to do is double click. So I put my mouse cursor over the title and I'm going to double click and it's highlighted it and all I need to do is type in the name. So I've typed in my new name, clicking anywhere outside of the box will change it. So if I just click below it, there you can see I've changed the title of my site. It's that simple. Now, if your name's a bit longer and it goes onto two lines and you want to change it, all you need to do is double click again and then you can play with the font size. You can see I can drag it. I can also center it, which is what I'm going to do right now. To do that, this little tab here, you can see it says alignment. If you click on it, it's going to show the different ways you can align the text. I want to center it and there I have my title centered. I'm gonna go back to the font size. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And then once you're happy, you just click outside the box and you're done. So I've now changed my title. So the next thing I don't particularly like the look of is actually the background. You can see where all these dots are. So I'm gonna double click on the background and it's giving me the option to upload an image for the background or I can use social images. So I could go to my Facebook if I had an image I want to use from there or Dropbox or any of these options. They also have images that are free that you can use from Wix. And you can also go to Big Stock, which is images which you actually have to pay for. But for the sake of this, I'm just gonna click on Free from Wix. I'm gonna select Food and Drink and see if there's anything that is applicable to kitchens. I don't want anything too crazy. In fact, I'm just gonna take a quick look at Home and Garden, see if I can find a kitchen image. So I'm gonna keep scrolling down. You see here, I've actually found some kitchen utensils, which is actually what I'm gonna be selling, but it's not quite what I want for the background. I've got some more, but I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna select Cooking Tools. And all I need to do is double click. And there you can see it's thrown that image in behind and it's quite decent and I'm gonna use it. Obviously you can play around with this. You can choose, you can keep changing the image whenever you want just by clicking on the background again and going through the images. Or if you've got an image you want to use, then you can use your own. But so far we're doing pretty good. We've changed our title and we've changed the background of our header. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the about page. You can see here, this is navigation. It's got home and about, and you can add pages whenever you want to, but they have the about page added by default. So if you double click on it, it brings up the pages you have, and you can change the order of the menu. I'm gonna click on the about page, close the pages tab, and then scroll down. And this is where you're gonna put in your about information. Now you can use exactly the same information as you use for your Facebook page. And to edit, all you do is click on what you want to edit. So I'm gonna edit the text first, double click on it, highlights everything, and then I'm gonna paste in the information I used for my Facebook page. There you can see, it's the same information, and then I'm just gonna click outside the box, and it saved it. And then I'm gonna change the title, I'm gonna double click on it again, typed in Charter Kitchen, and then click outside the box again. And there you go, I've changed the About Me page. Now you can see here we've got this opt-in form, we don't want to be using this, when you go to a later lesson in this module, we're gonna show you how to create opt-in forms, and these are to help you build your list. But for now, we don't need this, and we won't actually be using 
Wix's version of this, we'll be using our own. And it's also a good example of showing you how you delete something you don't want from the template. So for the opt-in form, I don't want this. I just click on it and then hit delete on my keyboard. And boom, it's gone. That simple. We can also do the same for this. We don't need this text. So again, I'm just going to click on it and delete. And it's gone. Now at any time, if you want to see what your page is looking like, you can come up to the top right here and click on preview. And there you can see that's what our site looks like. And right now it's showing the about page. Now the save button, you can always save whenever you want, but once you've saved, you won't be able to change anything you've already done using the undo button. But I'm gonna go back to editor and I'll show you that. So for instance, if I went to our story and deleted it and then realized, oh wait, I want that in. If you come up to the top here, you can see these two arrows, one's going back, one's going forward. You just wanna click on the back button and that's the undo button. And there you can see it's come straight back. So you just need to be careful when you're saving, you realize you're gonna lose the undo ability for anything you've already done. Now we saw in that preview, we had this whole box area underneath that we don't want. And to remove it, I'm just gonna put my mouse cursor over the lines below. And you can see you get this cross shaped icon, then hold the left mouse button down and just drag it up. And as you can see, it's removed that box and then just let go. And so we've removed that area of text. And again, all you need to do to check it. Once you've done that, click outside the box and it's done. And you can always click on preview. And there you go. It's not showing up anymore. Now, the next thing we're going to do is change the footer. And we can actually do that from this page. We don't need to go back to home. And there's a few things to look at. First of all, we've got these icons. Now, if you've got a Google Plus account for your business, and you'll actually have that when we set up our YouTube account later, you can put that information in the same with Facebook and the same with Twitter. And you should do that for all of these. And I'll show you how to do that. And to do that, all you need to do is click on one of the icons. So let's say Facebook and then click on set social links, click on the one you want to edit, and then come in here. And on the right hand side, type in your web address for Google Plus. And you could actually also use your YouTube channel if you wished. And then you would do the same for Facebook. Now I'm going to change this one because we've already got our Facebook URL. So I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to change the URL to facebook.com forward slash charter kitchen. You want to leave it default to open a new window because you don't want them to leave your website. If they want to go to Facebook, it will open in a new tab. Once I've done that, I'm just going to click on done and then on done again. And then if we go to preview and we click on the Facebook icon, you can see it takes us to charter kitchen, which is exactly what we want. So by the end of this module, you will have a Google address and a Twitter address and you want to come back in and edit both of those. You should already have your Facebook, so make sure you edit that. Now the next piece is this 2002, the co is the copyright. So we're going to double click on that and I'm going to change it to 2017 by Charter Kitchen. Now, as I said before, you can click outside the box or you can actually just click on the cross button to close the text settings. And there it is, it's done. And the next one, this is up to you whether you want, if you've got a business address, then you can use it by all means. I'm just going to leave this in for this example. But if you don't want to include your address, then you can actually remove the address part and just change the email. And again, for telephone number and fax, if you don't want that, you can just delete it. To do that, remember, you just click on it and then delete and it's gone. And you can do the same for this one. In fact, I'll just go ahead and do that. Seeing as this isn't my address, and click delete. Now the lines here that we're separating our information, we can also delete those. So I'm just gonna click on line delete it and on the second one delete it and we can leave these two lines because they're separating the social icons and your copyright information now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our home page okay so we are making progress and the next thing we're going to look at if i scroll down you can see we've got a post here and then a post underneath and so on and one of the things i like about this is it's a feed of your posts, so it's going to show on your home page the, the latest posts. But first of all, we're going to take a look at the sidebar. Now you can see here, Meet the Ninja Parents. It's not something I particularly want. At the end of the day, we're a brand. Um, it's something you can include. You can include information about yourselves if you want to publish your information. But I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm going to click on the image first and delete. And then I'm going to click on the text and delete. And then I'm going to click on the line and delete. And keep moving until I've got rid of everything I want to get rid of. Now, once I've got rid of all this information, I obviously want to drag everything below it up to the top because otherwise we're left with this big space. And it's actually really simple to do. All we need to do is single click on featured posts. And then you see this down arrow with a, light, with a line underneath it right here. You click on it and then hold your left mouse button down and then just drag up. And it will keep it all in line 
If you scroll to the top, let go. And you can see it's pulled up everything underneath. Now, join our mailing list again. We're going to be using a different method for this. So I'm just gonna click on it and delete it. We want to leave follow us. We want to leave those buttons in. Our community, I'm not, we're not gonna be having a community, but you can always come back and add this or you can add links or anything you want. So I'm gonna delete this section. And again, I'm gonna click on the follow us. Then left click on the down arrow with the line underneath and drag it up. And you can see how easy it is to move the content around. It, it's, just, it's a phenomenal system. They've really, really improved the whole setup. So I'm okay with what we've got in the sidebar right now. So I'm gonna say the sidebar is done. And again, I'm just gonna take a quick look at preview. And yeah, we're looking good. You can see how quick we've done this. You know, we've got what amounts to a decent looking site in a very short space of time with absolutely no skills required. Now at this point, I'm gonna click on save because I've done quite a lot of work. And this is something you can do more often if you wish, but just remember, that if there's anything I need to change, I won't be able to use the undo button. So at each stage when you save, make sure you're happy with what you've got. And remember, always use the preview button just to check it all. But you can do anything you want with this site. Remember, you can include anything, you can add anything. So it's not too much of a concern, but I'm gonna click on save. Now this is where you set your Wix site URL. You can see here, it's actually updated my change of name. If you remember, I did actually forget to do this. But if you do forget to do it, just go and change your username and it will populate. It won't populate straight away, but it will change eventually. And then you just need to add something to the end of the URL. And I just put my brand name again. Once you've done that, you just click on done. And there you go, I've saved my site. Now this lesson is so important, I've decided to split it into two parts as it was going to be a very long lesson and it's difficult to concentrate for that length of time. So in the next lesson, we will continue building our Wix site by adding content but also by connecting our domain name to our Wix site. But that's it for this lesson. Take care.